we have another candidate here tonight who would who is vying for that position as well, Katrina Sweat. Um, if you're from Guilford like I am, and that name rings a bell, it's because Katrina's in-laws lived here for many, many years. Katrina, you want to come up? Good evening. It's been a, a wonderful and a, a long evening, so I also will try to be brief. But I do have to say that whenever I come to this neck of the woods, I do feel sort of like I'm coming home because my husband, Dick Sweat, who many of you know, grew up in Guilford, went to Laconia High School, and actually coming in, I met his old geography teacher, and um, Gerald Knight, I don't know where, where Gerald is, uh, but it's always sort of fun to come to this part of the, the second congressional district, because I find out all the, all the dope on my husband, you know, what he did when he was younger, and even after 29 years of marriage, there's still quite a lot to find out, so it's, uh, it's kind of a treat to be here. Um, I want to thank Bill Gardner for his fabulous tutorial. I know, like, me, you probably all learned a lot, and Bill has made us all proud through his incredible service through the years as Secretary of State. I also want to pay tribute to um, one of our union maids who went to school with my youngest daughter, Sunday Fiona, who has become a great fiddler, and seeing just all the talent and all of the sort of grassroots um, spirit and idealism and desire just to step in and do something that we have all across New Hampshire. I am once again, as I so often find myself being, inspired by my fellow citizens. And of all the people in New Hampshire who inspire me, I would have to say that Granny D is at the top of the list. I'm so sorry she isn't here tonight because I always feel uplifted when I'm in her presence. She is truly a remarkable person. And Rather than take my few minutes to tell you about my background, I hope we'll have that opportunity sometime in the future. I'd like to share a story. I don't know if it's a true story or an apocryphal story, but it's one that always makes me think of Granny D and her mission. And the story is told of a Native American who went to visit a friend of his who lived in New York City. And uh, they were walking down the street in the midst of that incredible noise and din and bustle and clang and blare. Um, and uh, the native New Yorker um, sort of turned to his friend who had his head cocked and he said, is there something wrong? And the Native American said, you know, I hear a cricket. And uh, the New Yorker said, well, you know, your ears may be buzzing, but I assure you, you do not hear a cricket in my city. That, you know, even if there is a cricket somewhere in this vast metropolis, I don't think you can hear it in the midst of all this noise. But his friend said, no, no, I'm quite sure I do. And wanting to be a good host, the New Yorker just sort of stood there and followed along as his friend, you know, went halfway down one street, listened, shook his head, turned, retraced his steps, went down another street, dug around in the mulch of a rather sickly looking tree on the on the street and uh, sure enough there he found a brave little cricket chirping away well now it was the new yorker's turn to be astonished and he said you know you really need to go to the national institutes of health and have them look at your ears because i cannot imagine how you heard that small chirping sound in the midst of all this noise and uh, the visitor said well you know there's really nothing that special about my ears um, it, let, let me show you what I mean. And he reached into his pocket and he pulled out a handful of coins and he held them at waist level and let go and they clattered to the pavement. Well, instantly, within a many hundred yard radius, every head turned at the sound of those coins hitting the pavement. And the Native American said, you know, that really wasn't that much louder than the cricket. Believe me, my friend, it's not a matter of how well you hear, but it's what you're listening for. <laughs> and I think there's a real message in there, and a message that ties into our theme of tonight, which is campaign finance reform, and this desire and this goal that we all have, that our representatives, the people who want to represent us, should be listening for the right things, and in a democracy, that really is listening for the voice of the people. So from the very first time I heard that story, I thought, that's a Granny D story. And so I wanted to share that with you tonight. I also want to share with you my great love and appreciation for this incredible state that we share. You know, we really are um, singular in this vast United States in our passion for politics, in our sense of community, and in our willingness as individuals to roll up our sleeves 
jump into the trenches and get to work. And I am proud to be, um, I'm not yet announced, but I'm proud to be running for Congress, proud to be sharing that endeavor with my friend and colleague Anne McLean Custer. We're both privileged to come from families with a long history of public service. And I think we both feel ourselves to be proud inheritors of a great tradition, but it's one that we all share in New Hampshire. And so I thank you for coming out tonight. I thank you for staying long enough in this uh, very impressive program to hear us out. And I look forward to meeting you, talking with you, and learning from you along the campaign trail. So thank you so much.